Right, but you were saying what you were going to become. I was calling things of being as though they are. I had, I had dream, I had faith, you know, and uh, and uh, just had a lot of enthusiasm. I had, and, and God brought the right <laughs> people into my life to help to mentor me. Okay. We all need mentors. And uh, I remember, so that year I went to London and uh, I was tr getting ready to, to prepare for the Miss Universe contest. And I heard a little voice say, get out of the vey. There's not enough room for the two of us. And I look, in, I look in the mirror, and we were back then, we were posing, pre, at the, doing the prejudging in the, in the back room of a bar in a hotel, you know. <laughs> it wasn't like it is today. Uh -huh. And I said, that's right, there's not enough room for the two of us, your head's too big. Uh -huh. And Arnold looked at me, and he says, I know you, Turnil, you're a tough guy from New York, the best man will win. And I said, you're looking at him. But that, that, I didn't win that year, but I came in second that year. Okay. But he looked at me, and he, says, uh, he said, Dennis, look at the pretty girls. And I said, yeah, I'll come back next year. So we travel all around Europe doing posing exhibitions and seminars, doing TV shows, doing movies. We made a, I made my first movie with Arnold called Hercules in New York. Mm. Since he won the, uh, the contest, they gave him the lead, Hercules. Okay. I, but I became Samson. Ah. <laughs> okay. Now, later on, you know, that was a biblical kind of thing, that, allegory that God had for me. And uh, so we, we traveled around the world all online. We had a good time getting along with one another. Joe Weed came to, Joe, Joe Weed invited Arnold and myself to, to be involved with him. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, and if, and so after getting everything I wanted, won Mr. Universe, won on the Mr. World, won Mr. World, and uh, make movies and everything, had my cars, convertibles, and lifestyles of the rich and famous, the top ten list of parties, something was missing in my life. Mm -hmm. But but during this period of time, I studied every religion. If I met a girl in Greenwich mm -hmm. Village and she was into chanting in Buddhism and she looked pretty, <laughs> and I get a, I could get a couple of hugs, you know, I was hanging out with her. So I was out there with that crazy life, just caught up in the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and pride of life, being mm -hmm. this world champion that was walking around saying, "What's it all about? I got everything I want. Why am I miserable? What's missing? Mm -hmm. What was missing was Christ." Mm -hmm. And later on, I met a girl named Anita, who's now my wife of 33 years. All right. And then we got married on a little rainy day in a Catholic church. All right. And then uh, uh, we. we we were just putting our life together and I said, Anita, I want to go to California. I want to be involved in movies in the health club business. She said, whatever you want, let's do it. I love you. And oh, got, she really loved you. Because I'd be like, oh, you better get a job, uh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I always worked. I always worked. I always made money. Money okay. wasn't a problem. You know, mm -hmm. Being a tiny in New York, I worked at bounces <laughs> and made good these. I mean, just, just, I made a thousand a week arm wrestling. Okay. 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 Just okay. fooling around. And, you know, hobby kind of thing. Was, so you're out there making money. But I was living that compromising life. She was married, but I wasn't. Oh, I had Lord. those soul ties. I was out there with that player spirit. You know, I that. need to have her on the show because <laughs> yeah. I want to know yeah, about yeah. how did yeah. she stay with you. But go ahead. Well, she's writing a book called Stand By Your Man. Oh, oh, we got to talk. Yeah, yeah. go yeah. ahead. She's got the testimony, not me. Okay. So short, before you know, I went to California. My wife's okay. expecting her first child, and I get involved with all the wrong guys. Oh, yeah, and and supersize your faith with Mr. Yes. Brother Tenorino up in here. So it's my keep, life story. Amen. Just okay. came out. Keep going. Okay, we got the book. Okay. All it's right. all around the world. It's in the, uh, you know, family Christian bookstores, Barnes and Nobles, Borders, it's everywhere and it's going okay. great. And uh, so before you know it, I get involved with all the wrong people. Okay. So it was like the New York group came to California and before you know it, I'm getting involved with lifestyles of the, of the sinful, uh -huh. getting involved with many illegal things where now after one year I'm on the top 10 list of organized crime for having the largest escort service in California. Oh my God. And being involved with other things in the, uh, card, card games and bookmaking and Shylocking, life in the fast lane. I was loving and having a good time. You know, the Bible said sin's good for a season and before you know it, after having many death threats and, uh, and two girls dying from the escort service that I was being been involved in, uh, the police put me on the top ten list and were following me 24/7. Wow! But God did a miracle because my attorney said, Dennis, uh, you know, I just I got busted. They 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 broke the door down in my Hollywood office, and there I was on every way, uh, every major TV station, former Mr. Universe, Mr. America, involved in OC, involved in illegal things, and so my world was coming down. My kingdom was about ready to be shaken. So then I, my, my lawyer said, Dennis, we can get you a one year a sentence, give you a one year deal. I said, is that what I need to do? Take the one year. I said, okay, I'll take the year and I'll go on vacation. <laughs> if you can do the crime, <laughs> you can't do the time to mess with the crime. Right? <laughs> so my wife said, it's the best thing that ever happened. And something profound happened when I went home one day. I knew I was going to be sentenced to one year. In a, in a week, I had to go to prison. And when I went to my house, there was a woman there. And I said, who are you? She said, oh, I'm this woman that your wife hired to do some work around here. Mm -hmm. And by this time, I was losing hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions of dollars. My, my business was ready to be bankrupt. And she said, but I'm not really here for that. The Holy Spirit sent me. I'm going to pray for you. God's called you when you were a little kid. And you're serving mm -hmm. the devil and you're full of demons. <laughs> But I'm going to pray for you, and God's going to deliver you and set you free. Sounds like something my mama would say, but go wow. ahead. <laughs> and you know what? She was 100% right. And turned out the following week, somebody I found out somebody put a hit on me. One was oh, going to track me and, and whack me. So there I was, you know, find, uh, with voices speaking to me at nighttime saying, get him before he gets you. Mm. So I went to get this guy with two guns at my waist, okay? Mr. America, Mr. Universe had all these titles, but I was empty inside. Mm -hmm. And the wage of sin is death. And there was... 
you're going to get this guy, either he, he or I going to confront him. Mm-hmm. And with that day, he got a flat tire. And he got a flat tire because this woman was praying for me. All right. So God set up a roadblock. Mm-hmm. All right. So I wind up in the LA County Jail. Evo Knievel was my cellmate. Oh, my God. And he used to, <laughs> Yeah, he just got saved. He was on the Robert Shula show recently. Uh-huh. And it's a miracle. Wow. And, uh, and in prison, there was a black man that was preaching in the prison. I never heard no Pentecostal preaching, hooping uh-huh. and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jesus <laughs> loves you. Yeah, you can be yeah. born again. Yeah, you, know, you can be saved and healed. I heard hear all this kind of stuff. And I went by there just to see because it was exciting because it's boring in, uh, in prison. Okay. Uh, okay, it's boring and you got a lot of time. And <laughs> I was breaking up the fight between the Mexicans and the blacks. Oh, my God. I mean, I had a reputation, so no one said, hey, that's the guy with the money he's, okay. a, he's a wise guy you know? <laughs> so i had respect over that and um and this guy started prophesying over me say thus saith the lord you were called when you were 12 and god spoke to you in a loud boisterous place and i see you in a tunnel he, he was reading my mail as they would say okay and he started to prophesy over me and i said this ain't for me this religious stuff and you guys you guys are here because it's a cop out and this religious stuff you know and he said oh you can run what you can't hide god's called you and you're going to be preaching the gospel around the world wow and then god did another miracle i was released on the work for all program where i worked for jacqueline Mm. selling vitamins as a salesman over the phone right. to finish out my term. And God sent a Holy Ghost woman, the prophet of the Lord, the first day on the job working with Jack Lane. She looked at me and read my mail. <laughs> prophesied over me, mm-hmm. told me that I was called when I was 12, and God spoke to me in a tunnel on a train. It was a, it was a divine intervention of God. Mm-hmm. And when she put a, head on my head, put a head on my hand, the power of God went right through my body like a hot thunderbolt, mm-hmm. like hot lather from heaven. I got hit with a glory bomb. Amen. I was on the floor. I was up. I was down. I thought, wait a minute. I'm here to work for Jacqueline. What is going on here? <laughs> God is sending these missiles, you know, to wipe. But I was feeling peace and joy. You know, this oppression was leaving. Joy was coming in. Mm-hmm. And, and then before you know it, my best friend, he got saved that was working with me and then a, a fellow by the name of Ray McCauley who you know right yeah. he has a church of 50,000 people in South Africa he started to minister to me wow. and one day the phone rang I picked wow. up the phone and he said Dennis if you say one little prayer and if you mean it godly sorrow brings repentance wow. and I did I said a little prayer Jesus I'm a sinner <laughs> but you die for my sins uh, I confess from my mouth believe in my heart you died and rose again save me Lord got in my car went back to the LA County Jail in the work for the program and I cried out to God and I said God I sinned against you the God of the universe I've done a lot of bad bad mean things but I'm asking you to touch me uh, fill me with your glory fill me with your presence I'll never look back show me how I can overcome the flesh and the devil and temptation That's if awesome. you do I'll serve you and I get hit with a thunderbolt from heaven I felt the peace of God pass all understanding I saw my life pass before me like a movie I saw myself come uh, as a baby I saw myself getting into trials and tribulations I saw the love of my parents I saw my life the good, the bad, and the indifferent. Then I saw a dark cloud, a dark kingdom in the background that was forever lurking there. I saw two kingdoms, and I'm in my car driving on the 10 freeway going back to the LA County Jail. When I parked my car in front of the LA County Jail, the glory of God hit me again. I felt three times before I went into the prison. And mm-hmm. in prison, God gave me the gift of discerning his spirits. Mm-hmm. And I saw uh, homosexuals and transvestites that were in the prisons. Mm-hmm. And I saw there was there was dark, demonic creatures that had, had possessed these men to put, have affection towards another man. Right. And I saw police officers that were full of anger and, and, and meanness and I saw right. there were spirits controlling them right. and so God showed me he, he took me for a ride on the other side wow. the invisible became the visible and the unheard became the heard he took me right into his kingdom like Paul said I know a man who went to the third heaven he saw things he could not describe mm. he heard things he could not even utter you know and so th- that was my uh, Initial compact with the kingdom of God. You see, today we, we we're, today the church is what I call the, the church of the Laodicean. It's a church of the friend, friendly, uh, freak, uh, uh, what do you call it, Rex? Seeker friendly. Seeker friendly. Yeah. Oh. It's really a gathering of the lukewarm. Because okay. they don't want to bring the Holy Spirit in. See, but That's Paul deep. said, I come yeah. before you not with wisdom of man. I come before you with demonstration of the Holy Ghost and That's power. Awesome. So your faith would not be in the wisdom of man. Your faith will That's be good. in the power of Almighty God. Go on and preach, brother. So I, got set, <laughs> I, got, I mean, God hit me with, he hit me with his kingdom, uh-huh. which knocked out. Everybody's kingdom has to be shaken. Okay. He's got to break the man before you make the man. All right. So he was, I was the clay and he was the potter. Mm. And, uh, and I knew that I knew that I would never go back serving the devil. Now, now mm. at this time, my life was a mess. I got released the next day because the man of God prophesied. And he said, Dennis, when I say, say it, that settles it. Thus saith the Lord, you're going to be out next week. I said, wait a minute. I got more time to do. I got probation three years. Thus saith the Lord, you're going to be out of prison next week. I got released the same exact day, he said. And wow. I said, why am I going to get released early? Why does God want to do this? I did a lot of evil, mean things. He said, because he wants you to get into the word of God and mm-hmm. prepare for your life's work. Mm-hmm. Prepare for your destiny. Mm-hmm. Prepare to preach the word. Prepare to prophesy and evangelize around the world. Mm-hmm. When I got released, I went home and knocked on the door. My wife thought I escaped from prison. <laughs> <laughs> she, she went over the door. 
door. <laughs> she wouldn't open the door. Wait a minute, isn't that like when Paul and they <laughs> right like here in Northridge? Okay. <laughs> right here in Northridge. Okay. You said you did it. You finally did it. I would always tell I would always tease my wife. There ain't no prison to get a hold me down. <laughs> that is great. And so oh so, so finally I broke into my own house. She said, get out of here. <laughs> broke into my house.